Hello and welcome back. This is Mr. Duffick and we're going to do some more IXL tutorials. So I had a student ask me uh, some questions about IXL U7, which is tangent lines, kind of part of the circles unit. Okay, so there's only a couple variations of problems you're going to encounter in U7, uh, all involving tangent lines. Now a tangent line is a line that hits a circle at exactly one point. So imagine we have our line right here, line NP. Okay, and the line starts here and it goes, 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 goes until it hits N, it hits that exact one point on a circle, the single point, and then the line can just keep on going on forever, go on forever and ever and ever and ever. So we have this line that goes on forever and ever, but it only intersects the circle at one point. It only hits the circle right here. It cannot hit the circle anywhere else. It's just at this one point. That is a tangent line. Okay, tan, uh, the, the prefix tan means to touch. So when we call something a tangent, it's just a place that touches, or a line that touches at one place on the circle. So here the question is asking, uh, Line NP is tangent to circle M, so we just established that. Line NP right here is tangent to this circle. It only hits the circle at one point, circle M. So what is the angle M? What is the measure for angle M specifically? So the measure for angle M is just going to be this angle right here. Now, what's key with this IXL, the, one, the other one thing you really have to know is that whenever you have a tangent line that hits a circle and then you have a line that goes from that point of tangency, remember that term point of tangency, it's just where that line is tangent. If there is a line that goes from the point of tangency to the center of a circle, a radius, right? If we have a line like that, that means the angle here, the degree value, has to be 90 degrees, it has to be a right angle. Making this triangle right here a right triangle. This angle right here is 90 degrees because we have a line that is tangent here and then a line, a radius, that meets that tangent line at exactly the point it intersects on. So this point, or this angle is 90 degrees, this degree value is 27, and all we're missing here is our degree value here, which is the measure for angle M. So the one thing we do know about triangles is that their angles have to sum to 180 degrees, or all three of a triangle's angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So we have, uh, let's see, get rid of you, do this. Okay, so that means we have angle N, which is 90 degrees, we just established, plus 27, right? This one's going to be 90. This one is 27, plus whatever our mystery angle here is, we'll call that M. And all of that has to be equal to 180 degrees. Okay. So from here, we can just uh, get M by itself. We want to get M by itself. We want to isolate it. So to do that, we have to get rid of the 90 and the 127. So there's a couple ways you can do this. We're just doing basic algebra here. Uh, what I will do is I will just drag down 180 and set it equal to, we will simplify 90 plus 127. When you type in 90 plus 127 into a calculator or do it in your head, you get 117. And then we'll drag down the plus M. So now the only thing we have to do to get M by itself 
is to subtract the 117 from both sides. So we'll subtract 117 here, minus 117 here. Okay, 117 minus 117 cancels out to zero. 180 minus 117 just ends up being 63. That's gonna be equal to M. All we have left is M. So we have 63 equals M, or M is 63 degrees. So when we go back to the problem, type in 63. Sure enough, we have it correct, okay? Okay, this is the next type of problem. It's the same thing, except instead of angles, they are going to give you the lengths of sides. So it says that line JK, so this uh, line right here, is tangent to circle H. So this circle, we have a circle right, circle right there, and the line right there, JK, is tangent. So it's asking what is the length of the side HK. So what is the length of this side right here? Well, it's the same principle. We know that, and I'll start drawing earlier here. Since we know that this line right here is tangent and that this line right here is a radius, it connects to the point of tangent C and then the center of a circle, we know for sure this angle is 90 degrees. It's a 90 degree right angle, right? And so whenever we're missing a side of a triangle, and we have a right triangle, like a 90 degree triangle, right? Uh, that means we can use a certain theorem to figure out what our missing angle is or what our missing side length is. And what that theorem is called is Pythagorean's theorem. Pythagorean's theorem, of course, being a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, and A is usually referring to the shorter leg of our triangle. So we have our shorter side right here. It's going to be A. B is usually our longer leg of the triangle. So this one is going to be B. And then the hypotenuse is going to be C. So our missing side is going to be C. How we know this side is the hypotenuse instead of B, this uh, side uh, uh, JH over here, or HJ, is the hypotenuse, the slanted side, is always, always, always right across from the right angle. So it's always the side that is opposite of the right angle. So we know B can't be the hypotenuse because it's connected with the right angle. And we know A cannot be the hypotenuse because it's connected with the right angle. The hypotenuse is separate from the right angle. It does not touch it. It's opposite of it. So... From here, we will use Pythagorean's theorem and we will come up with what C is. So A squared is going to be five squared plus B squared, B is 12. So we'll go 12 squared equals C squared. And we don't know what C is yet, so we're just gonna leave it as C squared, okay? Now we have to simplify the exponents here. So we're gonna do five squared or five times five. Squaring something just means multiplying uh, itself. So five times five is 25 plus 12 squared or 12 times 12 is 144 equals c squared. We'll just write c squared. All right. Uh, and now we're going to add everything on the left side. So we have 25 plus 144 equaling 169 equals c squared. Now c squared equals 169 is not our answer. 169 is not the length of hk right here because we're looking for C, not C squared. Now, to get C from C squared, all we have to do is square root it. Square rooting is just the opposite of squaring. Uh, squaring is something where we multiply the number by uh, um, with itself to get a larger number. Square rooting is the opposite. Square rooting is we have a large number, like 169, 
or 25 or 144. And something, some number times itself equals this number. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to square root both sides here. Square root is this symbol. Okay. Uh, square rooting something that's squared just means these two cancel out. So we're left with C. And now we're going to square root 169. So what number times what number is 169? 10 times 10 is 100, so that's not it. 11 times 11 is 121, so that's not it. 12 times 12 is 144, so that's not it. 13 times 13 is 169, so square root of 169 is just 13. So C equals 13. So the length here of HK is going to be 13. So we'll go back, type in 13, and we got it. Okay. So the rest uh, of these are a repeat. This is a the same question, uh, except this line is our point of tangency. So that side is going to be A, that side is going to be B, and then this side is going to be our hypotenuse C. And jump again. Okay. Uh, this is another type of problem. Uh, same type of principle though. So it says line NP, so this line right here, and line PQ are both tangent to the circle. And it's asking for the value of X. So since we know both of these lines are tangent and they meet up at the same place right here, that means both of these sides are going to be equal to each other. And you can kind of see that, right? It kind of looks like NP is congruent or equal to PQ. It looks like these are the same length. And so all we're going to do is we're going to set them equal to each other and figure out what X is. You got to pay attention exactly to what the problem is asking you. This one is asking what X is. It's not asking what NP or PQ or anything is. It's asking what X is. What is that little X equal? So since both lines are equal, we're just going to set them equal to each other. So we'll do line NP is, is X minus one. So X minus one equals line PQ, which is just 27. Okay, now we just want to get X by itself. So to do that, we'll add one to both sides. And we have X equals 28. And so we'll type that in. And there we go. Okay, same question right there. Okay, and this is the last type of question you're going to encounter. So uh, this is very similar to what we did a couple questions ago. Uh, they give us a circle. They give us this triangle here. Uh, the A side, the, that short leg, is going to be the uh, line that is tangent to the circle. And all it's asking is if the line YX is indeed tangent. Because it looks like this line is tangent for sure, but it's asking us to prove it. Uh, like I say in geometry, we can't just assume things by looking at them. We have to prove them mathematically because it could be off by like one degree uh, or like a half a degree or something, and it would be incorrect. So uh, all you're going to do for this problem is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to do Pythagorean's theorem. Um, and what we know is all tangent lines need to have that right angle when it comes to the radius. So we have our line here, line uh, WX as our radius. And then we're supposed to be finding whether Y or XY is tangent. So if it's tangent, that means that there has to be a right angle here. It has to, has to be. Meaning Pythagorean's theorem has to work. So if we do Pythagorean's theorem and it does not work, then that means it is not tangent. Now, this is basically the problem we did before. So we know uh, if, if we go back, I can't really go back here, but if we go back, we had this problem where we had five as the A leg. Uh, this side right here is the B leg. And then we found 13 to be our answer, right? It was the square root of 169, right? Square root of 169 is 13. So this is the same problem as before. So we know that if we go through the math, we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You plug 5 in, so it's 25 plus 
b squared, which is 144. And we know c squared is 169. We know that already, just from before. So this is the question you have to ask yourself for this problem and other problems like it. You're gonna to get to this point. Does 25 plus 144 equal 169? So does five squared, this side squared, plus this side squared equal the hypotenuse squared? And we already proven that, yes, it does. 25 plus 144 equals 169. So um, let's say it came out to be 25 plus 144 equals 200. Is that a correct statement? It's not. 25 plus 144 does not equal 200. Definitely not. That, it's, that's illegal. That doesn't make sense. So if you came out with an answer like that, then it would be no. It's not tangent because it can't be a right triangle. It can't have a 90 degree angle there. But since we already know that it does work out, uh, then we know that it is indeed uh, tangent. So we'll click yes. And there we go. Okay. Uh, you can email me with questions or leave them in the comments. Have fun and study hard, y'all.